Good morning, everyone. Welcome back to Chamomile TV. I have myself here a nice hot cup of chamomile tea. If you want to join me for this video, you're welcome to. If not, enjoy some secondhand chamomile vibes as we go. Let's jump into it. Today, I have a new series for you. I'm calling it Drum Roll, please. Try Hard Book Review in which unlike my lazy book review series, I'm actually going to have some, some slides and some background research. Um, and I wanted to do this because I read a sci-fi series called Neverness, also known by its official name, Requiem for Homo Sapiens. And I just really dug this series. I got super excited about it, I was super addicted to it. I dropped a few responsibilities and showed up late for things while I was just blitzing through the last couple of books and I wanted to tell people about it. Now, Neverness is in the genre that I would call philosophical sci-fi. That means it's as much an exploration of what we are and why we are here as it is an epic science fiction tale. You can think of it as kind of Siddhartha in space. The main character's personal journey is as important as any other piece of the plot. The quintessential example of this is Frank Herbert's Dune. It's probably the most popular example of this genre. The author of this book is David Zindel. Here's a picture of him. He went to the University of Colorado at Boulder, and he lives in Boulder, Colorado now. He majored in anthropology and mathematics. And my feeling from knowing that about him and reading these books is that there's a lot of him in these books. Now, the first thing you need to know about this series is that it's four books long and it's zero indexed. That's right. It starts at book zero. I got this wrong. I, uh, I read it in this order. I started with book one and then realized my mistake. As a programmer, I am very, very uh, ashamed to admit that. I'll be resigning my membership in the Programmers Guild as soon as possible. This is conceived as a standalone book, Neverness, followed by a trilogy. So you can think of the trilogy of books one, two, and three as sort of the sequel to Neverness. Now, Neverness is much more of a straightforward sci-fi yarn, whereas books one, two, and three get more into that Siddhartha in space feel. So you might, if you, you might enjoy book zero and not like books one through three, so I kind of liked it. I started with book one because it let me know what I was in for. But you know, you do you, do it whatever order you feel like. Random permutation, go for it. The book, most of the action in the book centers around the city of Neverness, which is uh, the only city on an ice planet of the same name. Neverness is the home base of the order. The order is the governing structure of uh, the civilized worlds, which is the largest political grouping of humanity in this universe. It takes place about 3,000 years in the future, and the civilized worlds has about a thousand stars. So you know right away that this is kind of soft sci-fi and that faster than light travel is possible. Neverness, the city, has a bit of a paleo-futurist feel to it. Motorized vehicles, robots, and cell phones are all banned. The order has a bit of an old school scholastic feel. The order itself is a scientific and technical order where people learn technical skills or do research. There's people who become pilots. There are people who specialize in consciousness and computers and robotics and the intersection of consciousness and computers, all sorts of specialties. And they take on apprentices that are trained in the order. Now these books are not for everyone. It's a good test that if you find two of the following topics interesting to you, like you'd be willing to read a book that contained a lot of it, then you will enjoy Neverness as much as I did. Some major themes in the books are religion, especially the history of religion and how religions grow and schism and die. And you can tell that he's borrowing a lot from Christian and Buddhist history in this. Eastern philosophy, especially Taoism and Buddhism. There's a, a race of aliens who are basically space Buddhists who have a big influence on one of the main characters and his base philosophy is very Taoist in its nature. 
drugs, especially trip reports, or mystical experiences in general. Um, the mystical experiences that the main characters have drive the plot. They can go on for quite some time from a first-person perspective, the changes in senses of identity and the changes in sensory experience that occur when the main character is on space ayahuasca or interfaced into a computer with other people or having more old-fashioned, sober mystical experiences. And lastly, Inuit anthropology. Remember, David Zindel is an anthropology major. On the ice world of Neverness, there are a group of humans who have reverted to the life of American indigenous people living on the ice, hunting seals, building igloos. Book one, which is the second book, actually starts off with about 80 to 100 pages of life in this neo-Inuit kind of land. And that's what I started with. If you are if you jump into Neverness looking for a straightforward sci-fi, you're not necessarily going to find it. One way to illustrate what Neverness is, is through what it is not. If we think of the show Star Trek, it's sort of famous for having no politics, religion, or economics. You know, those things that we spend 95% of our life thinking about as humans in this world. Star Trek has this weird, sterile kind of future. That is not the world of Neverness at all. In Neverness, there are lots of religions, uh, cyber cults, neo-religions, and back office politics determine the course of humanity. Zindel depicts the rise and fall of religions in a way that mixes sympathy and cynicism. He, prevent, he presents a view of religions that are formed by mystical experiences, but then the core of that gets diluted and institutionalized to serve people's ambitions over time. And as this happens, splinter groups and schisms develop as groups of people try to get back to that mystical core. You have some religions that are very hierarchical and some that are more Protestant. You can tell that David just has an interest in how religions are formed and die. And in the Neverness universe, there are gods. Now, these gods are superhuman intelligences that often started off as humans and have grown so that their brains encompass whole star clusters. These have names like Ide the God, who was once a human with the last name of, I believe it was Nicholas Ide, the April Colonial Intelligence, and the Silicon Entity. Some of these are very well known and are the subject of religions that people, that humans are following in the civilized worlds and elsewhere. And some of these are kind of unknown and shadowy behind the scenes. They have significant impacts on the plot. Like when characters interact with the gods, things go in a new direction. These are turning points in the plot. And the gods are at war with each other. They struggle for resources. They manipulate the, worlds, uh, the world of humans. Overall, I found this universe very compelling and very interesting. Um, I think, like, why don't we have religions dedicated to, to machine gods and uplifted humans today? I mean, these are topics that people have investigated, you know, people have theorized about. In the rationalist community, there's even some theory about how future uplifted gods could have effects backwards through time, through timeless decision theory. But And I think the reason why this hasn't happened is because the, the kinds of people who think about the singularity today have the lowest amount of religious instinct of anybody in the world. They're, they're mega nerds, super rational. Um, but I think the way that, that Zindel depicts religions arising as technology advances and maybe starts to alter our humanity is pretty realistic. I, I, I can imagine these cults of personality forming around uplifted people or machine intelligences. It's not hard to, to imagine that. And then go, I'm gonna finish with my overall opinion about these books. And to do that, I'm going to have to talk about mild spoilers, the mildest spoilers, like things that you could get from the back of the jacket. Um, overall, I would give this books about four to four and a half stars. And the reason for why not five is the same reason that you'll find a lot of people who gave them less than five stars on Amazon is the main character. In the first book, book zero, 
It follows Mallory Ringus, who is a young pilot of the Order. He's ambitious, he's conflicted, he's dark, and also, but he's struggling towards the light. He's a, he's a character that, that I can relate to. He struggles to control his anger, and sometimes he kind of sabotages his own goals by, by being out of control. And then books one through three follow his son Danlo, who is much more idealistic and spiritual and gentle. And uh, he does grow uh, quite a bit in books one and a little bit in book three, but he's much more of a static character. And, he, and he's kind of like too perfect, too good. Think about, I don't know, Harry Potter. Uh, Harry, Harry is even a little darker and more complicated than Danlo. Uh, Danlo is a little bit too Siddhartha-esque. Uh, he's too unflappable. And uh, sometimes his habits of thought and action can get a little, re little repetitive. I enjoyed the second, the trilogy, uh, Danlo's trilogy. Like again, I'm torn between four and five stars on it, but I wouldn't want to read a fourth book with Danlo. I'm pretty done with him. This was a tasty series for me. I, I'm a huge fan of philosophical sci-fi. I love religion. I love philosophy. I love the themes that David talks about. My, my favorite sci-fi series is still Book of the New Sun by Gene Wolfe. This doesn't quite rise to that level. Book of the New Sun is flawless, uh, but this is a wonderful series of books for people who like that kind of writing, which isn't that common. Uh, Gene Wolfe gave one of the blurbs for the cover on this book. He read them and was a fan, and he had very nice things to say about David Zindel's Neverness uh, quadrilogy. If you like Gene, you'll probably also like this series. Well, that's it. Thanks for tuning in to Chamomile TV, and I hope you enjoy these books as much as I did. If you, if you end up checking them out, leave a comment. Let me know what you thought. Peace.